Hey, how's it going, 234? How's everything?
hopefully he stays. He should not touch anything. Get that key set up. Hey Ed, uh, I will work on a little bit of Daphne, not Velma. Hopefully, uh, Velma video might be up next weekend. All goes according to plan. Saturday is usually my day to screw around with my own personal stuff if I have time, so I'm just gonna kinda do a couple random things here and there. I wanted to get this base set up for Hyperion because uh, I don't wanna work on him and have to keep laying him on the floor. Stuff starts to kind of gel up fairly fast. Yeah, the sweater is, as of right now, her skirt is done, and I got the collar, the cuffs all finished up and the head situated so the fourth video will be the sweater but next video you'll see how the skirt turned out I was hoping to work on the sweater today but yesterday I had an eye doctor appointment uh, for a yearly checkup and he put so many drops in my eye I couldn't see at all yesterday so nothing got done I'm thinking maybe I could work on a little bit of his hair today and then uh, like one stream I'll be able to sculpt the whole base because I just wanted to get a generic base for him uh, we're gonna rework his whole uh, upper body I have a uh, whenever I get a chance this whole neck area and chest is gonna be reworked because it's uh it's actually taking down for the cape so we're gonna kind of build it all back up should work out pretty cool. And then we're gonna add April O'Neil into the streams now. Work a little bit, uh, get pull her out in a second or two. For this one, I'm just going to put glue on the bottom. Cleaned up a bit.
So uh, I did my key on this one and I put the metal rod there. So I just want to kind of get this keyed up into the base. I want to make sure I line her up correctly. Hey Raz, how's it going? What's up, Marco? How have you been? Haven't talked in a while. Been uh, pretty busy myself. Hopefully you're getting a bunch of projects done. Sounds like that's all you do now, Raz, just print. Not a bad thing. Oh, that's why. Yeah, you don't want your boss flipping out on you. Well, as long as you're keeping busy, Raz.
What stuff did you order, Raz? Anything good? Wow, sounds like you got a lot on your plate then. Hey, what's up, Storm Shadow? Well, if it's nice actually, like where I'm at, it's a good day to chill. Nice and cool. Got all the windows open. Hey, what's up, Tim? How you doing?
Yeah, it seems like you're going to be busy for, uh, for a long time with all that stuff. So I'm trying to catch up on my personal stuff this year, because next year I'm going to get swamped again. Why are you working inside today? You should be outside. It's amazing. At least here it is. Yeah, I'm always swamped. Uh, it wouldn't have been bad if last year we didn't have those lockdowns, but I think once I get past all catching up, I should be back on track. I think uh, July I'm just going to focus on painting kits for the month. I got too many kits piled up, so I got to get those done. just the damn uh, supplies some sometimes I can't get them so some things are just kind of like on hold for a bit hey what's up the customizer uh, I'm just hanging in there So did you guys see the uh, Sideshow Storm reveal? If you did, what do you think about it?
Well, I mean, that's Jim Lee for you. I mean, that's basically the storm everyone pretty much remembers. I mean, what are they going to do for Storm? Uh, I mean, I guess if they went crazy with it, they would have to call it a maquette. So they went with the premium format, which is usually simple. Hey, at least, at least they got a Storm going. It took, what, 10 years or so, I forget? And then if this sells well, they'll probably do a bunch more. I need to mix up some more. Well, like everyone says, if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. And the way things are going, I'm pretty sure a lot of fan art uh, guys out there start making storm statues. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a slew to pick from sooner or later. There's a lot of versions that could be done too. I think, what is there, like three uh, or two uh, Savage Land storms out there? But I don't think there's any other storms, unless I'm mistaken. Maybe a few older ones from like salt and pepper or something. You know you're going to buy the Sideshow one. Hey, how's it going, Jigsaw?
I am, for anyone who's wondering, um, this is my Hyperion custom I'm working on for myself. And this is a generic base. I'm trying to get the keys and feet set up before I do any sculpt work. Once you get the feet placement set up and you get the statue set up, then uh, from there it's easier to do some kind of sculpting work. So it's kind of like, just put a bunch of crap together on it. And then we can go from there. So this is just some magic sculpt. It's a little bit easier to kind of work with. I think the idea is going to be sitting on like a rock type thing if you ever read the Earth X Universe X storylines when Hyperion was kind of like sta standing over these like rocks in space thing gonna try to capture that then I'm thinking uh, I might have my friend Meta John uh, etch a, like an Earth X logo and kind of put it into the rocks somehow I gotta figure that out Alright, so to make the easiest way to do this key, instead of trying to squeeze it on top, I sort of like to kind of create a cup. And then after this cures up, I can uh, put like AUs in there and make a better key thing. You'll see in a second. Baby powder, something that sticks. All right, so you see this uh, key here. Trying to put a bunch of AUs or Magiscope there and squeeze this on is kind of a pain, but if you already have a cup there, it makes life easier. Uh, so basically, you just kind of do this. Just kind of push it down. So that way I'll be able to make a key a little bit easier than trying to do it this way. Because what it'll do is it just squeezes over and it's a pain in the ass.
at least now I got some good support on him. So we got the rod all the way up his leg up there. And then we got a rod over here and support. So now he's not going to lean like uh, they do with that big ass cape and no rods. Just to make sure we're looking okay. And then uh, once I'm ready to do the base, I'll just grab some of my freeform air and I'll just sculpt a whole bunch of rocks and stuff. So there's a there's a hollow piece of resin I had in the garage. So I glued it to the base and I drummel through it and I put A's in there and I put A's around here with some metal rods. So at least this part is secured just for now. Once I actually do all the sculpting, it should be better. But at least we got some good supports on both feet. It was just a matter of lining him up correctly was the problem. But And now he doesn't take all that space up with the huge cape and that crazy base. So that's a bonus. Alright, so this we're adding into the streams. This is the Adam Hughes uh, Rogue from Sideshow. This is going to turn into a uh, um, April O'Neil. So I think this will be a kind of a fun one to work on. Something on the side like I did with uh, Miss Marvel. So there's a, so we did last time, we put a rod up this leg, and that should be pretty good, I don't need another one here, because there's another rod in here, because it broke. So we gotta let that set up. What I want to do is start planning out Daphne's skirt. Line. So her I'm thinking we don't have to go crazy thick. I'm thinking we keep the line like right about here. got to figure out how I'm going to do these lines because you can't dremel into this stuff clean and you can't etch into it clean. Hey what's up Terrell?
So if that's one line, I figure the second line would probably be right about here. So I can't really drummel into it, because if I drummel into here, I'll probably break it. And if I sculpt up thicker, I could do that. I could layer like a thicker thing of bays around it. Or I could just roll a thing of bays thin and do a light thin line of A's going around. Which might work better. The only problem with the Poison Ivy uh, is the short hair characters. That, like when you chop up that hair and the arms, it causes a hell of a lot of issues because there's no hands there. Um, you have to rework the whole entire shoulders and stuff. It's it's almost layering on even more work because just to chop it up is a pain. Well, on my Patreon, I did a post today. Um, after this Daphne and Velma are done, I have a Poison Ivy and a Power Girl for the next uh, stream series. I'm going to post them up with a couple characters I think would work. So we'll see who uh, see what the Patreons vote on it. I wish I could play uh, the music I want to play, Jigsaw, but it's YouTube. But once I, uh, once I do my flash stream on Picardo, I'll be able to play better music.
Yeah, the only the only issue with the poison ivy is that I've done so many customs off of that statue. I don't know if people want to see me do another one. I mean, it's up to the Patreons. Uh, I just thought the Power Girl, since I got a cheap one from somebody, would be something a little different. Sort of like, you know, the Batgirl uh, for Daphne, the Black Canary for Velma. So just trying to change it up a bit here and there. So far I got a couple good characters of mine for the Power Girl, um, definitely, you know, outside the box characters, uh, which would be fun, but we'll see. I mean, the Ivy statue, like, could work for a lot of characters. I mean, I've done so many off of the Ivy already. What did I do? I did Mary Jane. Uh, I did the, uh, was it the Star, Star Sapphire? Like, the Wonder Woman version of Green Lantern, I think, or something. Uh, we did uh, Pokemon Jesse. Uh, I did a Dark Phoenix a long time ago. Um, I think that was about it. But you could do a lot off of that one. If. Only if I can find one of the heads in my collection here that are sort of in scale. Maybe we could go to a step further and swap out the head. But I don't know if I got anything that would work. But that means I would have to sculpt the hair. But we'll see. That statue already, just to get it down, all those leaves, there's a lot of work. It's not an easy, uh, it's not a custom friendly statue that gets done fairly fast. Yeah, that's sort of an option. I mean, I have a lot of like, extra, well, not a lot, but I got a few extra heads here and there in my box of parts. Some might work, some might not. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I gotta get through these first, but I'm just kinda keeping them at the back of my mind for down the line.
Yeah, her skirt doesn't really go to the waist. Well, the lines sort of lower. So I guess that's where it would be, right? to kind of work with the hips. Hey, how's it going, Vigilante? Good thing I stocked up on these lead pieces on eBay years ago. Probably triple the price now.
yeah this body's working out pretty well I had to do a I had to really chop up this area here the other day because it just didn't I wasn't getting that little uh, booty shape there because I put too much uh, magic sculpt so I sanded that down a bit what I'll do is I'll probably add a little bit of wrinkles there when I get a chance But I think we're just going to roll out Aves and put a little bit of a line of Aves going across because I can't chisel into this and it does, I think it'll look okay to give it a little bit of like, a little bit of like a texture thing on top, you know, like a little seam. Just to make it a little bit different than flat. So that'll be the seams there. Just trying to go around the muscles and stuff, the hip bone. So before I do that, let's uh, let's play with some uh, silly putty and see what it looks like with the collar and somewhat of hair, just to get an idea just where we're kind of going with it. This way I can uh, visualize it a little bit better. So thinking we'll put the scarf around there and have it come down like that somewhat. Something like that. Something, just an idea, and then she has the headpiece that kind of goes. I guess it goes if it would go behind the ears, right? Or does it go in front of the ears? I forget. And then uh, she has her bangs. Yeah, it might be behind the ears. I'll have to... I gotta plan that out a little bit more when we're ready to do it. So you figure her head hair is like... You know, we could kind of do a little... So if this hair is kind of like... Ok, 
Kind of bring it in a bit there, sort of. Have it come down around there. And then if I have to, maybe this ear we won't see, but maybe this ear we'll see. So if this comes down behind the hair over there, you could kind of bring it around, maybe. This is behind the ear, that goes over there. Yeah, I know it's not quite, quite there, but it gives me a better idea what I'm doing. So, and this hair would probably be like over there. So yeah, I might need to see at least one ear, maybe both. I might have to just do it for the hell of it to be safe. we want to keep the wind going with uh, Thelma. So. So it'll be something like that, I guess. I don't know. We could kind of come underneath here. Yeah, I know the bangs are too thick right now, but that's kind of... I think that'll, uh, yeah, that kind of gives a little bit of an idea what kind of hair she'll have. So all that sculpt work I do behind her neck, well, you we won't see it well, so I'll just kind of focus more on the front.
Hey, what's up, Raphael? Yeah, thanks. We're getting there. We're just uh, experimenting at the moment. Kind of getting an idea what this hair is going to look like. Alright, so do you guys think something like that? So this way the hair is kind of going this way. Um, we don't want to cover up the cleavage, so... We can uh, do something like that. Alright, I think gives me a little bit of idea. I'm gonna take a picture of it with my camera. So this way, if I have to go back to it later, I know what I'm kind of going for. Yeah, so probably what I'll do is scarf first, then we'll do the headband, put the headband on thick, I'm going to have to tweak out the ears first, um, and then I'll do the bangs, and then we'll do the hair afterwards. But I got to do everything else first, I'm just kind of toying with it right now. I think that'll look pretty good, something like that. So we'll have it kind of come underneath there, we'll have this kind of come over it. And then this will just kind of cover this part here. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying there. Um, I'm just trying to visualize this a little bit better. So what we do is when we do it, we'll do it in two sections. We'll have it split in the middle, like there. And then we'll have this part, sort of, just trying to visualize. I usually do this with my silly putty before I do certain things. Yeah, so I mean, I see what you're saying, like, you know, a little bit more on top, something like that. But I'll get to that once I start putting all the eaves on it and we start doing it. Uh, usually hair is always last anyway. I mean, when I do it though, I might, you know, I might... I might kind of sort of, you know, play with the bangs a little bit. You know, maybe kind of go like this a little bit more with the bangs sort of give them a little bit more life than just flat so something kind of like that Yeah, the old silly putty is great for kind of experimenting before you do something. Because if you're not sure on how it's going to look, um, so you figure like when we're looking to the side, we got a wave coming. Uh, where we're looking over here, it's kind of flowing that way. 
And of course the back of our hair will have a lot more, you know. You know, it'll be a little bit thicker back there, of course, you know, and definitely maybe kind of split a little bit more back there like this, you know, kind of comes down. Yeah, so there's a, it's definitely a lot to do on it, but hair will bring it together at the end. Take a couple more pictures. I did this with Hyperion and my friend helped me out with all the muscles. So when I'm ready to start working on the uh, Hyperion body, upper body and neck, I'll put the picture in the stream so this way you guys can see like how Silly Putty helped you get an idea of what you need to do. Yeah, so that, that would be, uh, I think that'll be look good, you know? What do you guys think? I think it should work out pretty well once we get the hair like that. And then she's holding up the Scooby Snack. It's come together pretty well. So now that I got the Silly Putty on the face, I kind of see the face a little bit better now. Uh, because what it was is that helmet head of the Batgirl was kind of confusing me a little bit. But I think that'll kind of work it out better. Alright, so I'm definitely going to have to sort of tweak out the ears a bit. So I'm going to have to work on the ears too. So finish up the outfit, get the hands situated, uh, work on the Scooby Snack. Um, and then uh, once that's done, I can actually start... Uh, I'll probably tweak the ears a little bit when I get a chance. And then we can start focusing on the rest. I hate to take all this off, but whatever. You can see the difference now of like what it was and... <laughs> so since the ears are there, what I'll do is I'll kind of like chisel out the inside of the ear. And then I'll kind of like sculpt the inside. Over here as well. I was worried about the uh, top of the head area too because I was, wasn't getting it right. But now that I know the hair is going to cover all that, I'm okay. I don't have to worry about the back either. That's all going to get covered. I want to do some wrinkles in the wrist because I drummled out a little bit of the wrist here. So I want to add some wrinkles. But I think we're going to work on the lines now. Get those done. But before we do that, before I get my hands all dirty, uh, I got two commissions in from Chris Ballara. It came in the mail today, so let's kind of open it on stream. We'll see what we got. It's probably not in the stream today, but... I've been selling a lot of stuff on eBay and I've been doing a couple commissions here and there with artists because uh, I just wanted new stuff on my walls. Um, I'm just tired of having all this stuff in my collection and it just never gets to look at it. So if I can't display it anymore, I don't want it. So I saw Chris Delara uh, drawing this on a stream one day and I absolutely loved it. 
So I asked her if she would uh, sell it to me or do something, and she did a color drawing of it. And then she also uh, gave me a surprise. Packed it up pretty well. Alright, she actually added a couple extra things, but we'll see. Oh wow, awesome. So she did a Hinata for me, and uh, this is just a drawing she was working on of a pinup working, uh, drinking a beer, and I just absolutely loved it. I love how that came out. I love pinup stuff like this. Just original ideas and just fun stuff. That came out amazing. And I told her, I said, uh, just because it's a manga, uh, you know, Naruto stuff doesn't mean you can't do it in your own way. So this is actually awesome. I got some good spots for those on the wall. Let's see what's in here. Oh, sweet. Give me a couple of printouts. Oh, wow. That Mary Jane is awesome. I love her style. Oh, that one's awesome, too. I haven't seen these before. Oh, wow. That's an amazing Vampirella. Yeah, I love her stuff, man. Her stuff is absolutely amazing. This is so good. See, I, I love it uh, looking at artists online where they take... Uh, you know these characters and they uh, make up their own uh, you know it's their art style in those characters which I love this one's got to go in the kitchen definitely got to put her in the kitchen this one I think I got a spot for on the wall over here but these uh, these are awesome like I said I haven't seen these before from her I like the little web down here she threw <laughs> Awesome, 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 awesome. I love her work. Yeah, I just wanted to open these on stream for you guys just to kind of show you I like this type of stuff. I mean, I love comic books, but I love finding artists out there that can do their own style, and if their style is just kind of fun. But. 
cool stuff. If any of you guys are not, let me actually get her a link to her thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've been buying up frames like crazy. Like my whole wall is just I got tons of stuff everywhere. Um, I just want to have. I used to have like a portfolio of prints, and I had like. 50 prints in there, but I never looked at them because they were in a portfolio, so I decided if I can't put them on the wall and see them, I don't want them anymore. So I actually sold a ton of prints back in the day. I thought about doing a Hinata custom, but it would have to be off a superhero statue, and I, I'm kind of debating yet if uh, if a uh, superhero statue would work for a manga. So that's kind of something I'm thinking about down the line. But for right now, I'm kind of I'm sticking to a lot of the uh, like old cartoon characters and some anime characters, but I'll, I'll venture out as we go down the line. But this is great stuff, so if uh, Chris sees this video, thank you so much. Yeah, Raz, that's kind of it's kind of something I'm thinking about. Well, uh, I got I got too much on my plate as it is now, so maybe in next year type thing I'll uh, I'll see. But for right now, we gotta we gotta focus on everything. If I keep adding more stuff to my plate, I'll never get anything done. Alright, so had a little bit of a uh, me time there, seeing the prints. Uh, so now let's kind of get back to work a bit. But, uh, some of the things I'm thinking about that I'm not, I haven't ruled out yet is old, you know, old cartoon characters like, you know, Velma, Daphne and stuff. And then, I am also want to venture into, you know, other types of cartoons, uh, maybe stuff like Venture Brothers, uh, Archer, um, even stuff like maybe characters from like Harvey Birdman at Law. Stuff like that, I kind of want to just try to more characters like that. But, we'll see. We'll see what characters, uh, patrons vote for, what stuff I want to do on my own. Have fun. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, Raz. I figure I can do that and get away with it. It's not like a company that would produce a lesser known character is not going to sell, like, you know, 300 of them or, five, or 1,000. But if I'm just doing a one of a kind, it's kind of fun.
Yeah, Jacob, there's a there's a lot of characters from all the Adult Swim stuff. You know, you got C-Lab 2021, or was it 2020 or whatever it was. Venture Brothers, Eon Flux, uh... You know, there, there's just tons and tons of those types of shows that got some fun characters. So, that's kind of like where I'm, uh... Want to bring some of these, uh, statue customs into for streams. Now, the problem is, the female stuff I enjoy more. And... Most of the time you can get away with the female stuff. The male stuff, you're kind of stuck. It's either it's a sculpt of Superman or it's a Spider-Man or an Iron Man. It's like there's really not a lot of variations to the, the male type stuff out there. And they're either flying or they're crouched. So it's kind of hard to... Like the Hyperion I'm working on that works for Superman statue. But we'll see. Never know if something pops up. Actually, you know it would be a really cool custom. Um, in Venture Brothers, uh, what is it? Number uh, number two, or is it number one? I forget his name. Uh, Marnark Tenchman. Now that he got all jacked up in the cartoon uh, with the ripped shirt, then you could take like a Superman statue and make that out of him. That would be kind of funny. The only problem is, is the face. You got to have those goggles and this weird-looking face for him to work. That would be a funny one. Yeah, I wouldn't venture too much into the MTV stuff. Uh, I just, I just kind of like mentioned a Aeon Flux because uh, that one is the kind of only thing that popped out of my mind. The Max, eh, I've never really into that character too much. I gotta do stuff that I kinda wanna do as well. I don't wanna do stuff where I'm kinda like, it's like me with Iron Man. If I, if I have to work on an Iron Man, I don't wanna do it. It'll just sit there for days and I'll just stare at it. So I gotta have some kind of drive to do it. The one thing I learned early on, if it's if I'm doing something I don't want to do uh, the character of, it just doesn't get done right, so stick to what I enjoy. Yeah, Jill of the Jungle, that's a funny one too. I mean, there's also, you also got characters from the Jetsons, uh, Flintstones, um, you know, April from Turtles, uh, I mean, there's a slew of characters out there that'll be fun in superhero form. I tried watching, uh, what was it, not the Bird Girl TV show that just came out, it's like the continuation of Harvey Birdman, uh, not as funny as I thought it would be. The only problem with that one is you have to put her in, like Harvey Birdman and her, you would have to put into a suit. So, it kind of takes away from the statue a bit. But there is a lot. We'll see, uh... We'll see what the year brings. Oh, 
also been toying with the idea if I could find a good statue doing Misty from Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon or however you say it. I know she's a fan favorite. I never got into the Silver Hawks. I never was into those that much. off and cut pieces off. Easier. Be right back and then go in the garage, roll this out and cut a couple pieces.
think what I'll do is I'll uh, sculpt this a little bit thicker and then I can sand it down and take it down a bit. Uh, it'll probably work out a little bit better that way. And then maybe what I could do is when I paint it, this little seam, I could paint a little bit of a darker purple than the purple that's here. So this will be light, this will be dark, and maybe this will be the in-between color or something. Kind of stylize it a little bit. I like the idea of a seam thicker here like this. They just kind of gives it a little bit more. Good thing her butt doesn't hit the table, otherwise this will be a pain to lay her down.
Maybe once I prime this up, I might have to go back in and add a little thicker areas and wrinkles to around it. We'll see. Um, I think the fiery hair looks a little bit better than the flat orange, honestly. Because you can see those two pictures in the screen. The fiery orange seems to pop a little bit more against the purple. I think uh, the duller orange won't work, really. 
only because it's kind of like a cosplay girl and I'm gonna add a little bit more detail into the hair so I would think that the fiery hair works a little better I don't know what do you guys think The only, only reason why I think the flatter orange won't work is because, like, that would be the darkest part of the hair. And then if you try to add highlights, it'll be a little bit more whitish orange. And I don't know how well it would uh, translate. I mean, all the cosplay girl outfits I looked online when I was picking up pictures and I have like in my uh, selection there um, most of them are kind of like the fiery hair I mean, I actually didn't even really think of it. Like, I usually don't think of color paints until, like, I'm, like, ready to start painting. Kind of just focus on all the sculpt work first. But... I mean, I plan to do the outfit a little bit silky, you know? Give it a little bit of a silky look to it. Um... I was thinking of doing like the, you know, we're going to do the legs in the pink, like uh, the pantyhose. Yeah, that's what I was thinking more, you know, I did the Mary Jane, the Phoenix statues, um, so, Yeah, I could, I could add a little pearls to the hair. I usually like to add a little pearls to every hair I do. Uh, and then I kind of like to flatten it down with some of the Vallejo varnish. This way you sort of get that hair that's shiny, but it's not like in your face like pearl. That was a lot of mistakes I made back in the early days when I was doing this stuff. Just takes a little bit of time to kind of find that right mix. And then, then again, like I always tell people, it's, you know, if you're customizing or repainting, you can do it any way you want. You don't always have to stick to what other people do or what the artwork tells you to do, you know?
because the way it's looking is her outfit will be a little silky, like it's more of a dress, and then uh, Velma's is a little bit more flat because it's a sweater. So I think each one will kind of kind of pop a little bit more against each other. So thinking about it, her dress will be a little bit more shiny, kind of silky. The leggings will be silky but toned down a little bit so it's kind of like not fighting against this but it still feels a little bit uh, like uh, pantyhose I guess. Kind of the goal. Uh, yeah, Jacob, when I post the next uh, Velma video, which probably may be next weekend, at the end of the video you'll see them side by side at some point. So it'll give you an idea of how they're looking. So far I think they look pretty good. So, what I'm the thinking is, Instead of making one base and only they're only stuck on one base together, maybe make the bases sort of like connecting, but separate. So if you separate the bases, you can still get an idea that they're still parted together. So that's kind of what I'm debating on. So you figure if she's on a base here, it's kind of like a little bit cut, and then Velma's base kind of connects to it, but also separates. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing. And I'm thinking of doing that for two reasons. One, well, I mean, I don't plan keeping them, so they'll definitely be up for grabs when they're done. Uh, I don't know if someone's gonna pick up both of them, um, but then if someone does, are they going to have space to put them both together? So... It's kind of like, I'm trying to think of that route. I mean, I wish I could keep everything I do, but I can't. I mean, to connect the bases really actually wouldn't be that hard. It's just a matter of finding the correct way to kind of connect them and also look good separated. But I think we'll, we'll, we'll come up with an idea.
you figure like maybe one base has the tombstone and the other base maybe has another tombstone maybe or uh, maybe something else yeah I'm, like I haven't gotten that far yet so I think maybe once we're kind of maybe when we're at the hair stages for each one and we're kind of like finishing it up that's when I'll start working on the bases And the sad thing is I'm probably going to have to buy more resin, and that all went up, uh, just to get my base uh, resin pieces. Like, what I could do is, um, I have, like, large circle uh, pans. Uh, what I could do is I can sort of build a wall in front of the pan, and then sort of pour resin on both sides. And then let that, uh, you know, sort of kind of be the connecting pieces. Well, I, I can't go too crazy, Jacob. Um, I, uh, I gotta kind of... It's only... S I mean, to be honest, there's only so much you can do with an item before... Spending way too much time on it versus selling it and paying bills. Um, so we'll kind of see how it works out. Well, one thing I thought about is if one base has the uh, tombstone, maybe there's a on the other base there's a sign saying "Keep Out Danger" or something like in a wooden sign so I was kind of debating like maybe it's kind of like a fenced off area like I'm trying to think of simple but that sort of gives you that old school like haunted vibe uh, like graveyard scene Yeah, that sucks, Raz. That's the only thing I hate about the 3D printers. If something falls off or you, it, you have to go through it all over again. I'm sure they'll fix that in a few years. Well, don't forget, Jacob, but there's going to be other elements into the base because I'm thinking of adding, like, uh, the Scooby-Doo collar on the ground. Uh, she's going to be holding up the uh, Scooby snack. Um... So we'll see, we'll see how far we can go with it. Well, that's good, as long as it's a smaller, tiny piece. I know it would suck if you had to spend another 18 hours printing something. So I think that's good for the lines for her outfit. So what I'll do is I'll let that cure up and sort of sand them down a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll have a, a light purple, a medium purple, and then dark purple. Medium, light, medium dark so it looks like it's a it's a seamed uh, skirt so I kind of kind of makes it pop a little bit more Hey Doug, uh, this is kind of like, this is the Sideshow Batgirl Premium Format statue, so if you want to look it up, you can look up Batgirl Sideshow, um, and as far as the character, it's uh, just Daphne from Scooby-Doo, so it's kind of like, I'm using the elements of the Batgirl statue, 
but I'm kind of doing my own little take on the shoes. So it's kind of like my little take turning into Daphne. Uh, and it's kind of like the idea is taking a superhero statue and converting it to a cartoon character type thing so it looks like a cosplay girl. It's different, it's fun, just kind of changing things up. Yeah, so I think, uh, So I think that looks good. Uh, right now it looks a little too thick, but once I sand it down a little bit, it should come together. It's the only problem with Abe's. Like you gotta do it in sections. It can't really sculpt from scratch and go back to it whenever you want. Outfits come along pretty well. Um, I think maybe we could do a little bit of the wrinkle if I don't mess any of that up, and then we can work on Hyperion's hair. Hey Ken, how's it going?
No, I'm not the master. I'm just addicted to the sculpting statues all day. Trying to do is create some wrinkles here so it's not flat. Um, there's so many out there for us, for, you know, dentists, it all depends on what works for you the best. Um, I can give you the number of the package, the one I, that's my go-to tool, if you can find one. So this is my go-to tool for uh, masking, like Silly Putty. Uh, I opened up a second one, so this is the one I use all the time. And this is the, uh, you're gonna have to kind of freeze the video later. Um, so this is the Premiere. So this is what I use for like all my uh, Silly Putty and sometimes fine line work. This tool usually, like I bought three, two of these at the dentist because he had to order them for me. They were like $35 a piece. But if you go on eBay, you can find these types of tools. They're like all over eBay. And you could get like a package of three for like uh, 15 bucks, I guess. I bought a whole bunch of them because they come in like these things so you can kind of like uh, order these so it depends on what you like you're looking for I mean, there, if you go, the only problem though is if you order those cheap, crappy ones, like that are in like a, a cheap set, they're they're sh they're just crap. Um, you really want to get the expensive dentist ones, as long as you take care of them and keep them clean, they'll last you a long time. But I find that those cheap five dollar kits, they're just uh, they don't they're just cheap metal, they bend. That's kind of not worth it. That, that cup looks a little bit better than when it did.
Yeah, I I know there's a lot of cheap of uh, like dentist kits out there, but like I said, I think a lot of them are really just cheap, and they kind of like they're not like really good. I mean, they're not bad, but I just find that spending the good quality ones, they don't break, and they work good. Uh, Jacob, the only thing that's gonna come off is her right hand. Uh, there's no way I could have broke this pieces uh, in pieces for this item. Gonna try to plan out the Scooby snack now. Um. There's a, yeah, it's, be a little bit tricky with some of those dentist kits. Um, they look amazing and they look for the price, but I find that when you get them, they're really just cheap metal pieces. Uh, most of the good, uh, good dentist stuff, like uh, these tools here, they get caked up with um, like eaves if I'm not paying attention. So I can use an X-Acto blade and score it off. Right, I can score this off, and it gets the A's off these items, and it really doesn't destroy the metal if you just go nice and slow. But if you buy those cheap tools, like these are those cheap ones, if you try to dig in with the X-Acto blade, you start cutting the metal up. So, Yeah, if they work, Doug, you know, more power to you. I just, uh, I just have a habit of, uh, I bought up a bunch of those cheap, shitty kits back in the day, and they were just horrible. I, I really, I like to have the good tools with the good angles and stuff. I also made the mistake, too, of buying, like, thousands of tools, you know, I had all these tools and I'm like these things are amazing and sadly I, I kind of use this tool mostly for almost everything you know it's like you like a lot of the sculptors going to the Jersey Fest show and Wonder Fest show all the sculptors said they would have all these tools for certain things but whatever tool they made or their one go-to tools they used it over and over and over and that's kind of you know my paintbrushes and this tool here and that's kind of what I use most of the time so when I uh, when I realized this was my go-to tool, that's when I went to the dentist to try to find more of them because if this ever broke on me, I would be screwed. Yeah, I, I, I remember I did a spring cleaning, I think it was two years ago, and I realized I just had all these tools that I've had for like five years, I never touched them once. I looked at them, I thought it would be good, and they didn't work out, so kind of better off uh, finding that go-to tool, get a couple of them, and just be safe that way. Alright, so her Scooby Snack. same thing with like shoes and clothes and hats you find that one amazing thing you're better off going buying a few of them because in a few years you'll never find it again so I do it with tools as well
So for her Scrooge now, we're just gonna kind of make a bone. I mean, that's what the Scooby Snacks were really well. So I'm thinking something like a Scooby Snack like that. What do you, am I mistaken on what kind of Scooby Snacks they had in the cartoon? So it was more of a diamond shaped sna uh, snack in the cartoon. Well, Shaggy was pretty much stone, so he would eat anything. Yeah, I'm thinking of keeping more of a bone, only because, like I said, this is a cosplay girl, so, you know. Yeah, a bag of weed, that's, we'll put that on the ground on the base somewhere. That'll, uh, Scooby Snack cartoon. All right, so some pictures look like a bone, other ones look like, they look like a f pile of weed in his hand. Um, yeah, I'm thinking we stick with the bone. Yeah, let's, let's stick with the bone. I think that'll work a little bit better. I mean, if you're, if you're focused on the Scooby Snack after we're done with the statue, then there's something wrong. You want to focus more on the the chest of her, you know? So basically, just do it on the paper. Give it a little texture. Be too big for her hand now. You know what? We'll do a we'll do a couple of them. A little bit thinner, a little bit bigger. This way, I have a couple options. Better safe than sorry.
one of these bones are bound to work. Once you paint it brown and stuff, it won't even matter really. Alright, see which one of those uh, work when they uh, cure up and I pop them off the paper. I mean the way it's looking it's either this one or this one. This one might be too big, but that one might work, or that one might work. I'll put these aside. something to drink and then we can see how far you get on this hair.
All right, so we got to try to give him receding hairline and sort of bald. So. and a little fix it to this red eaves I got. Hopefully that'll help uh, give it a little bit more of a pink. See how we can work this. I think once I uh, prime him up before paint, I'm gonna take uh, like a towel or like one of these rags and hit the primer all over his skin to give his skin sort of a texture with the primer. And then maybe I, I can make him look a little older instead of smooth. It's kind of the idea I'm going with on this. Actually not going to be a lot of A's on top of his head when I'm done, but... All right, so first we'll kind of do the sides. Right there, he's got the George Costanza look at the moment. So I don't think I'm going to go bald with him, but I think I'm just going to try to give it that sort of comb over look. And then maybe when I paint it, I'll leave a little of the skin tone showing. I think that'll work.
double check some of this drawings. Okay, cool. I found a, I found one I kind of like a little bit better. This one that uh, looks pretty cool. Kind of like that little light uh, style to it. So let's grab. Hey, what's up, fangirl? How is everything? Uh, hanging in there, just uh, enjoying the weather, got the windows open. Getting some work done, that's about it. Yeah, my friend gave me that idea with that uh, Rogue. I've had it forever and I just did not know what to do with it. And he said it would be a great April O'Neil. So I said, all right, let's uh, throw it into the mix.
gonna treat it like I treated the, uh, you know, Miss Marvel. So I'll kind of work on it here and there. Uh, sculpting hair? 
Um, uh, I do a lot of videos on how I sculpt hair with Aves. Uh, I don't know of anything off the, you know, top of my head that teaches you how to sculpt hair. I mean, uh, the way I learned how to do it was just practicing it. Um, I mean, you can just go on YouTube and just, like, sculpt hair. Maybe there's some traditional videos out there. But, uh, a lot of the stuff I do is on, uh, you know, resin statues with, uh, A's epoxy sculpt. And I use brushes to do it. You get about, you know, a few hour work time with A's. Yeah, I, well, the way I sculpt with the uh, Aves, uh, you know, you mix it together, you got three hour work time. Uh, I sculpt in sections. I got a couple of videos on how, you know, you, you gotta just kind of like hunt them down. But the way I sculpt hair, you wouldn't be able to like copy it. So, like, uh, I sculpt hair sort of like this. You just keep on like layering on sections of A's and you keep building it up and going in with the paintbrush. So I do stuff like that. I mean, uh, the best way to do hair is study it. Like, look at uh, people's hairs on Google. Uh, you know, just see how it flows and then sort of kind of try to sculpt the same way. I don't know, I'm not really a great teacher. I just kind of show how I do it, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think, uh, what videos I did. Um, the Wonder Woman, uh, uh, video, I think I did that one when I did the hair, which was the, the White Lantern Wonder Woman. Um, what else did I sculpt hair videos for? I'm drawing a blank right now. I mean, a good way to study hair is anime kits. Sort of how they sculpt hair in sections. Um, yeah, it's I'm so bad with that. I just I just post videos of what I do, pretty much. Uh, what other videos did I do? Just, I guess try to check out my work in progress videos. But everything is fast because it takes me hours to do it, so I don't really explain too much. But when I uh, start doing the hair and the live streams for uh, Daphne uh, Customs, that might kind of help you out a bit. I gotta try to do more of a receding hairline for him, so...
Oh yeah, that's right, Raz. Yeah, I, I've drawn a blank there. I'm kind of focused on this at the moment. Yeah, the Miss Marvel uh, live streams. That did a lot of the hair on that one. I think we've got good start receiving here in the main area. Yeah, um, she's got kind of curlier hair. So I guess the way I would do her uh, hair is I would actually sculpt the hat first. So you have the hat ready and then you can start sculpting the hair and make sure the hat kind of keeps fitting on the item. Or if you are if you want to attach the hat first and then sculpt the hair. So I use Abe's Fix It for hair. Uh, you mix A and B together, you got a two hour work time. Um, you don't have to do it all in one shot. You can do stuff in sections. Build up a little bit each uh, day. Stuff like that. So I'm thinking we give him this type of hair where it kind of goes off the edge like that. So if we're going to sort of give him older hair. Let's see how this works. So, kind of...
Ken, just regular, like, uh, paintbrushes? Oh, you're talking about the ones I use for, like, uh, the putty work? Yeah, I, I never really, uh, I only use them for putty. I, I never really, uh, picked up more than what I needed. I just remember they were expensive, though. I mean, I could be wrong, but I remember when I went to the art store, I think they were, like, around $12 a brush. What's up, Ryu? It's not a bad price for them. I don't use them, though. I mean, the only time I use them is for the putty, though. I mean, if you guys need them, that's not a bad price.
Hey, what's up, X-Men? Well, oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Trying to sculpt some old man hair. I think it's kind of getting there. Yeah, I would have streamed yesterday as a normal Friday, but I had a, my annual eye doctor appointment and I couldn't see for the rest of the day, so I said screw it. The guy wanted to put about 20 drops in my eyes, which didn't really need to do, but... Yep, you're you. That's exactly it. A 1-1,000 one, one scale, that must be a hell of a kit to work on. No, uh, Daphne is not done yet, still got a long way to go. <laughs> no, I wasn't swaying. Although when I was driving home, I was probably swaying, couldn't see too well. Yeah, this is Earth X Hyperion. So uh, basically, he's old. Uh, in the Earth X storyline, he couldn't die. So his hair is just receding. So I'm turning my Superman into him. At least I'm gonna try to sculpt some kind of old school hair.
Uh, if you read Earth X, uh, Universe X, and Paradise X storylines from Marvel, there are actually really great storylines. Um, this is Hyperion, which, I mean, if you look up Hyperion, he's in, like, the orange outfit. Uh, so in Earth X, uh, I liked him a lot because he, like, if you read the storyline, he couldn't die. He was just, like, living forever. So he asked Reed Richards to help him die when, uh, if he did a favor for him. He was just kind of a cool guy, character, so... It's a really great story. If you guys have never read Earth X and Paradise X and stuff, check it out. I mean, I don't really care for the character in the comics, uh, Hyperion, but the Earth X version was pretty cool. The artwork wasn't amazing. I, th I forget which one it was. The artwork wasn't all that, but the storyline was great. Really fun story. Yeah, basically, I think Hyperion in the beginning was supposed to be, like, Marvel's answer to Superman. Uh, I think he's in the Squadron Supreme, I think, something like that. Um, but I don't think anyone really cared, so it didn't kind of go off too well. Uh, Marvel had a couple of characters that try to compete with Superman. Hyperion, Gladiator, Sentry. I don't think any of them really kind of took off, so... Basically, I think they're bringing them all back with a Heroes Reborn storyline that's coming out. So I guess like Hyperion and all of them are coming back. Uh, Supreme was Image. He was a... Uh red and white if I remember correctly. I 
think that was a Rob Leefield character. Well, I'm just kind of, you know, just the characters that were, like, trying to compete with Superman. Uh, Captain Marvel, wasn't he, um... I forgot why they created him. But I just know Marvel tried to create a lot of Superman characters that just never panned out. I mean, they made a, a bust of the X, uh, Earth X characters a while back from Dynamic Forces, I think it was. So they did a, a Hyperion bust. I just didn't like it. I just figured this would be a fun project. like these oddball characters. It's getting there. It's a little bit of stylish, but you know. Uh, no, it should be fine to sculpt him. I mean, to paint him up. I'm not trying to go, like, super, super old, you know, like in the artwork. Just to give it an idea that he is sort of old. And he's got the thinning hair. I didn't want to go too thinning hair. But I want to give it an idea that, you know, he's got that stylized sort of balding going on.
I mean, it's just for me, you know, it's, it's not like if a company did this, anybody would really buy it, but it's just something I'm having fun with. And I figure, what the hell. Oh, we're getting there on them. I'll, uh, I'll pop out uh, Daphne in a second. And then uh, we're starting uh, April O'Neil off of the rogue uh, statue I have. And then there's just lots and lots of commissions I'm doing during the week. Trying to finish up the last re uh, large repairs that I've had from people. I want to get those done and out of the house. And I got my uh, Deja Thoris in the mail. She's absolutely amazing. But that's going to be a future custom series on YouTube. My friend gave me the suggestion for April, so I figure we'll throw that into the mix. Hey Butterfly, how's it going?
Uh, Jacob, uh, Deja is gonna be a pretty full-blown custom into a different character, but I can't tell you yet. But it should be a fun series when I start it. That's a uh, Deja is gonna be up after uh, Velma. So once Velma's done, I'll pull out Deja and we'll start a new series with that one. definitely easy you don't have to deal with anyone but you gotta gotta keep working though you can't stop <laughs> yeah wombat too Yeah, we'll get that base going. I just gotta have a catch up. Last year was real, just everything was just bad for everyone. This is Abe's epoxy sculpt. Doug. Uh, I use it on everything I do. You want to look up it go to Abe's studio A V E S studio um, this is fix it sculpt but they have Abe's which I use I pretty much use it on all my customs
I'm liking the comb over on him. Let's uh, lift this up a little bit more. tiny piece underneath of it and I think we're good.
it's not working the way I wanted it to. I'll have to throw in a little piece another time. Let this cure up. It will not have Scooby-Doo, then what's the sense of having a show called Scooby-Doo? I gave up on uh, shows and movies long ago. Everything they make now just gets cancelled or stupid. I find myself going back watching all the old stuff anyway. Uh, the new stuff is just all politics and all kind. It just everything is just trash now. There's no comedy anymore. There's no comedy stand-ups. There's nothing. Everything is just boring. So just enjoy all the old stuff for now. I used to go to comedy shows a lot for stand-up comedians, and that just slowly died out. Like, the places I used to go to just stopped having them. It's like comedians don't want to go out and get bombarded anymore by haters. So, oh well, it's the world we live in now. Invincible's amazing. Like, you know, Invincible's great, you know, stuff like that, but... You'll get somebody crying about it sooner or later, and then I'll have to take it off the air. It's like we're in a modern age book burning, except it's on the internet. Can't laugh, you can't have fun anymore.
Yeah, I saw the new He-Man trailer. It looks pretty decent. But I'm pretty sure something will make it bad. Alright, let's see how he looks on the statue. Not bad. It's a little bit more of a younger uh, hairstyle, but I think it'll work for him. And that's going to be April O'Neil. It's not going to stay though. Yeah, I think once I, uh, I'm going to leave like a lot of skin tone in it and then kind of do some dry brush and a white on it so maybe it'll come together a little bit more. I just didn't feel like doing single little tiny strands. I kind of stylize it my way a bit. I got a little bit of AU, so I'm going to work out that key in his foot. And then uh, we'll show you guys a little bit better of Velma. I mean, Daphne. Alright, so. So we did this probably, what time is it now? Almost six o'clock, so I think it was around 2.30 I think I did this. So it's definitely hardened up pretty well. Alright, let's see how this works. Shave down this, it's got a gunk on it. So that's why I did the cup so we can make the key. So I can throw a little bit more in here.
there we go. So now we got a nice little key system for both feet. And whenever I'm ready, I can sculpt the rocky base. Perfect. Yeah, he's getting there. Uh, so now that I got the hard parts done, because um, I was worried about getting the hair done before I do the uh, sh all the shoulders. Uh, so a friend of mine kind of helped me out with it. It's not that his neck is too high. It's that his all his shoulders and chest are missing because of the cape. So I did a silly putty sculpt and we're gonna build out all the chest, all the shoulders. We're gonna build out the back of the arms a bit. A little bit over here, cause um, it's a little bit, comes in too much cause the way uh, Hyperion's drawn. And a little bit of the thicker leg over here and maybe here. Uh, it'll give him a little bit more of a bulkier old man look cause right now he looks too young. But if you square up the frame a little bit more, it makes it look a little older. Uh, and it should come together pretty well. So whenever I do that on the stream, that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of work just kind of building out that whole section in one shot. But I think uh, once uh, once build out this section, it'll look a lot better. I'll uh, I'll have the silly putty pictures up when I'm working on them. But so we got the base going at least now. Uh, so that's pretty much good to go. We could also do another stream where I just kind of sculpt rocks with uh, freeform air and uh, Give you guys an idea on how that's pretty simple. So there's really not much to him now. It's a matter of the boots the silver piece here the symbol build out all the chest up here and then uh, Just figure out the cape and I'm gonna do a cloth cape because I don't want to do a sculpted cape. I hate sculpted capes but at least he's lined up on the base pretty well now too. All right, now as far as Daphne goes, this is where we're at with her right now. So I'll sand these things down a little bit and they'll be at least won't be as sticking out as much. Uh, outfit was pretty much there. I think what I need to do is really work out this hand first. Get this hand situated and then uh, I can start working up here. Because other than that there's really not much more to her. Uh, it's the scarf and then hair and then that's pretty much it. I just got to do a nice set uh, session of priming her up and cleaning her up, get everything nice and cleaned up and stuff. But 
she's there. She's getting there. And that is pretty much it. I think we're gonna call it a day here. Just wanted to catch up from missing yesterday. Plus I got to work on my Hyperion today. So other than that, uh, we'll probably hopefully see you guys again next week. Um, if it all goes well, I was thinking maybe Wednesday night to paint up the flash on Picardo. Uh, I'll put up a post on my Instagram if I do. So maybe like around, I don't know, seven, eight o'clock, I can start painting up flash and do a late night stream. See how things go. But other than that, you guys have a good rest of your weekend. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, we'll see you next time.